Today, I'm choosing Violence. I'll be ranking all of the early ritual monsters, basically everything that was available to players during GOAT format. We've got 14 monsters to cover, so let's just yeet ourselves right into it. Yeet! Starting with Elemental Mistress Doriato, a level 3 light spellcaster with an effect that treats itself as water, earth, wind, and fire attribute while face up on the field. At a level 3, it's one of the easier ritual monsters to bring out, typically only needing a single material. And with its low stats, it has the benefit of being easily searchable by Sangan. The effect, while gimmicky, does allow it to solely fulfill the conditions of Furin Kazan, which grants you the effect of either Regeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Delinquent Duo, or Pot of Greed, two of which were banned during this time and the other two being limited. This card also has some interesting interaction with the archetype of level 4 element monsters, allowing all of them to gain both of their additional effects. None of these are bad characteristics, but the card really doesn't serve a purpose outside of these gimmicks, and it doesn't really have a home. So, I'll give it a weak C, bordering on D. Before we had all of these fancy Eyes of Blue cards and alternative dragons, the Blue Eyes archetype was relegated to Paladin of White Dragon, a level 4 light dragon with two really solid effects. It automatically destroys any face down monster it attacks, no questions asked. And if you're feeling courageous, you contribute it to special summon an original blue eyes from your hand or deck. So, aside from good effects for the time, as another low level ritual, it's not too much of a hassle to bring it out. Honestly, the only detriment to this card is not being a warrior type, which would have added some very welcome searchability to an early blue eyes build. Overall, I'd give Paladin an A tier. Legendary Flame Lord would have made a perfect transition from blue eyes to red eyes. Until I realized that I was confusing it with Lord of the Red. Don't ask me how, it is what it is. Legendary Flame Lord is a level 7 fire spellcaster with the effect to add a spell counter for every spell card that is activated, and you can remove 3 spell counters from it to blow up everything on the field except for Legendary Flame Lord. So, spell counter decks, both old and new, absolutely do not need a ritual monster added to their arsenal but it's not a bad effect. Being a level 7 spellcaster, you do have the option of using Diffusion Wave Motion to potentially swing for game, but I'm sure there were also better options to accomplish that same goal. I'd rank Legendary Flame Lord at a C, right beside Doriato. The next two ritual monsters can sort of be paired together, as they can both be ritual summoned with the ritual spell card Earth Chant, which allows you to ritual summon any Earth ritual monster, but the levels of the monsters tributed have to exactly equal the ritual monster's level. Performance of Sword, one of the first ritual monsters, is a level 6 earth warrior with no effects. At a level 6, it's quite a bit more awkward to summon off of earth chant, and its stat line is atrocious to no one's surprise. If it were a level 4, I'd be willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, being that it would be searchable and I could justify ritual summoning a 1950 beat stick, but as it stands, it's one of the worst, so I'd rank it at F. Black Luster Soldier is a level 8 Earth Warrior with no effect. It sounds counterintuitive, but the higher level actually works in its benefit. Level 8 is much easier to work with in combination with Earth Chant, being that the majority of your monsters are probably level 4. And while you have the added benefit of basically running 6 ritual spells for this one monster, there are still better level 8 rituals at your disposal for this time period. It doesn't quite reach F tier, but a firm D. D4 definitely should have played something else. On the subject of level 8 ritual monsters, let's look at what is by far the worst. Crab Turtle, a level 8 water aqua. Yeah, this card is bad by every definition and then some. The only support this card has can be found in a legendary ocean, which drops its level to 7 in the hand. Yippee! As is the theme for a lot of the initial wave of ritual monsters, they really don't have a solidified home. If you were really looking for a water deck boss monster during this time, Neodatalus and Mobius are very much a thing, and you're even covered if you want to stick with non-effect monsters in the Gaga Gigo lineup. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? I'm feeling a strong F tier. Skull Guardian is a level 7 light warrior with no effects. I really don't have anything to say about this one. It doesn't have any outside support that makes it easier to put onto the field. There's really no reason you would put it on the field. It's a rare card and the artwork is cool. 
C tier, and yes, I'm being biased. Next is my overall favorite on the list, Reshef the Dark Being, a level 8 light fiend with an effect that allows you to take control of one of your opponent's monsters until the end phase at the cost of discarding a spell card. So, this one's interesting, but it raises a debate. If you're just looking to remove a monster from your opponent's field for the turn and aren't necessarily looking to use that stolen monster as tribute fodder, then you're better off running Relinquish to accomplish that goal. But if you want free tribute fodder or want to use one of your opponent's powerful boss monsters for your own nefarious purposes, then Reshef is a pretty solid choice. The glaring issue is that discard cost. Discarding a spell which ritual monsters are very much reliant on will more than likely put you in the situation of discarding a ritual spell, leaving you with the dead draw of a ritual monster in a following turn. But it's still a pretty decent effect, so Reshef gets a B. The next ritual monster is by far the strongest in terms of attack power. Shinado, King of a Higher Plane, is a level 8 light fairy with the following effect. When this card destroys a defense position monster and sends it to the graveyard as a result of battle, inflict damage to your opponent's life points equal to the original attack of the destroyed monster. With an attack of 3300, you're basically guaranteed to have this effect live with any attack, which is a plus. That all sounds great, however, this card is pegging for a magic cylinder and or a mirror force, perhaps even a bottomless trap hole. Having such a big number just basically puts a big dumbass sign on your chest that says, please hit me with a trap card, and for that reason, I'm giving it a C. Now, our last five cards can be grouped together in the same fashion as the Earth Chant Duo because these five ritual monsters are all dark attribute and can also be ritual summoned with the ritual spell card contract with the abyss which has the exact same effect as earth chant but applies to dark monsters instead of earth starting with the non-effect variety dokuro rider is a level six zombie so it's probably at the bottom of the grave for zombie monsters you want to include in your goat format zombie deck it can be easily recovered by book of life if it was properly ritual summoned and if it should be so unlucky as to be the target of your opponent's spell or trap cards you have the option of protecting it with tutan mask that's honestly a huge waste of those cards, so I can comfortably rank it at D for dead. Hungry Burger, a certified hood classic, is a level 6 warrior, and Hungry Burger suffers the exact same issues as Dokuro Rider, being an extremely questionable choice in your warrior deck. Being a warrior, it can be retrieved by the warrior returning alive, but in that instance you're adding a useless card to your hand unless you have the immediate ability to discard it for another effect, or if you have another copy of the Ritual Spell card. Based on its meme status though, I'll be generous in giving it a C. The Masked Beast is basically a better version of Blackluster Soldier, a level 8 fiend with 3200 attack with identical benefits to BLS. So, unless you're running a warrior dedicated deck or theme deck of Yugi, there's no reason to not run the Masked Beast. I ranked Blackluster Soldier at a D, so the Masked Beast enters the party of C. C for clearly a better option, brother. Moving into our effect category, Dark Master Zork should get an automatic F for not having a dragon head for a schlong. Regardless, a level 8 fiend with a gamble effect. You can roll a 6-sided die, then destroy all monsters your opponent controls if you roll 1 or 2. Destroy one monster your opponent controls if you roll 3, 4, or 5, or destroy all monsters you control if you roll 6. As much as I hate gamble effects, I have to imagine the hype is unreal when you roll that die on your opponent's full board and see a 1 or 2. But with my luck, I'll roll 6 every time without fail. Although, for being a gamble effect, it has pretty minimal drawback and your chances for reward are astronomically better than most of the game's gamble cards. So, it may be controversial, but I'd put Zork in B tier. And we save the absolute best for last, a GOAT format and just early Yu-Gi-Oh in general, Powerhouse. Relinquished, a card that probably needs no introduction, but for those not yet enlightened by the founding church of SUCK, Relinquished is a level 1 spellcaster with the following effect. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls, e equip that target to this card, max 1. This card's attack and defense become equal to that equipped monsters. If this card would be destroyed by battle, destroy that equipped monster instead. While equipped with that monster, any battle damage you take from battles involving this card inflicts equal effect damage to your opponent. It's got just about everything you need in one ugly little package. Stealing your opponent's monsters. The stat boost is having your cake and eating it. 
protection using your opponent's resources, and additional burn damage just to rub it in your opponent's face. And if that wasn't enough, Goose Eggs for its attack and defense makes it searchable by Sangan. So, it should come as no surprise that Relinquish takes our only spot in the S tier, being an undisputed top contender in GOAT format. And that is all 14 ritual monsters from GOAT format ranked, and this is the only reputable source for such a list, so it's also the definitive ranking. Going through this ultimately reminds me of how absurd and wacky the earliest ritual monsters were, and not necessarily in a good way. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. What is your favorite early ritual monster? Drop a comment down below. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.